Hey guys, thanks so much for checking out the podcast. I wanted to do a brief introduction for this episode before we start. Um, my guest is John Orion Young. And if you haven't already, I think you should fire up your Instagram app or go to Instagram.com and look up John Orion Young, uh, all one word. Check out his feed. It's going to give you some important visual context for what we're about to discuss. And um, it's really cool. So I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, John is an artist and he creates digital sculptures inside of VR using Oculus Medium. And uh, we go into a lot of different topics, including um, the effect that VR is having on people who are creating uh, art, the effect of the recent technological revolution, uh, information technology on people's lives and whether that's positive or negative. And uh, we go into John's creative process as well. Um, I really hope you enjoy the conversation. Uh, without further ado, this is John Orion Young. All right. Hi. Welcome to the Synthetic Native Podcast. I've got a very special guest today, John Orion Young. Is that right? Did I get that's that right? That's right. Hi, everyone. Okay. Cool. Um, can, so I just asked you to do this right before the podcast started, but can you can you uh, give everybody kind of your background? Yeah, definitely. Um, I started out as a fine artist, um, basically since I was a child. I trained with my with my father. He's a lost wax. He does like lost wax, bronze casting, and oil painting, um, and he does like uh, wildlife. So he's very meticulous about it being accurate and stuff like that. So I did a lot of that as a child. Um, and then I met Pud Paul Budnitz, who started Kid Robot um, after, I, after I got out of school. And I started designing bicycles with him. He, he left Kid Robot. We started a bike company. Um, and then, yeah, so I kind of switched from fine art to design and, and started learning a lot of stuff with, from Paul. And then from there, I moved to San Francisco. I started working with a company called Brilliant and doing... Uh, design for apps and different stuff like that. And then uh, switched over to freelance and have been doing freelance design and art. And then also all this virtual reality stuff, making just super psychedelic things. Yeah. Um, so for background is how I found you is I was, I think I was just searching VR art or for virtual reality art or something on, um, on Instagram. And then I love how your feed is just this very, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's got a feel to it. You know, like uh, some people's feed is like very, you know, mixed up lots of different things. Your feed is just this like psychedelic trippy made in VR digital art all the way through. Yeah. That's excellent. It feels very curated, you know? Um, and yeah, so we just go right into it. Like I, how would you characterize your art? I mean, I'm, people who are like listening, you should go type in John Orion Young, um, on uh on instagram or it's going to be in the in the links to this uh to this podcast but how how would you like describe it to someone yeah definitely um i i kind of describe it that way as psychedelic um i've been working a lot just with a central tenet of joy so the my initials actually spell joy and it's kind of it's kind of my demeanor i kind of am like a, a very happy go lucky type of person so um, I, I brought, I try and bring that into my work and kind of focus around that, that idea of just like, uh, ridiculous amounts of joy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, but there's another component to it, um, that you wouldn't get if you were just listening to this. If you, I don't know, actually, maybe I'm just projecting this, but for me anyway, it seems almost like, um, I get almost like an unsettling vibe from some of it. Is that yeah. important? Am I projecting that or is that, does that exist? Yeah, that's kind of intentional. Um, it's really interesting. I talked to my friend Paul a lot about this and whenever he was designing stuff for Kid Robot. Um, so like uh, kids tend to have like, like a child tends to hold one emotion at a time. Um, so like a child's toy that is designed to be like, here's a happy panda. And it's just very clear it's a happy panda. But as we get older, we kind of like hold like two or three or just like insane amounts of feelings all at once and emotions and 
you're thinking about like you have to pay the bills, but you're like super happy because you're eating a piece of pie. Um, so as adults, we have that kind of complexity. And so I like to try and do that to my work where it's a, it's a little bit joyful, but it's, a, it's somewhat disturbing. Um, maybe something's a little bit too like something's really happy and it's like warping and it's like taking over the entire space. Um, and it's like, it causes a bit of like unsettling, but it's like, also it's like, it was very, very happy. So it's kind of, yeah, it's like holding those two ideas at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, okay. So I, I don't want to go too far without just getting into the, the, the process. Cause I think that that's going to be really interesting for people is, um, so you use Oculus medium, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you talk? I've, I've only like, I've played around in tilt brush or whatever, and, but I'm also not really an artist. So can you talk about, uh, can you talk about using Oculus medium? Sure. Definitely. Um, yeah, Oculus Medium. I love Oculus Medium. Um, it's really weird. I started using it, and I originally used Tilt Brush um, a little over a year ago. That's where I kind of started. Um, I was using an HTC Vive, and then my HTC Vive died, and I kind of used it as an excuse to switch to Oculus because I was really, really interested in Medium. Um, and Medium's really weird. It's it's kind of like you're sculpting a balloon. Um, it's very weightless, and you're you're moving it around um and interacting with it carving into it um but like i don't know it's kind of amazing you could just add as much material as you want take away whatever you want um it's very easy to like manipulate the material um but what i like about it compared to something like tilt brush is you're you're sculpting with volume so like that volumetric effect of it um is is very different than a lot of the other creative tools in virtual reality Whereas in uh, in something like Tilt Brush, you're more like just adding like a 2D like brush stroke. Yeah, definitely. You're kind of like layering things on instead of just having starting with a sphere and then kind of carving into it or or adding to it. Do you um have you done uh like I don't want to say real sculpture, but yeah, real sculpture. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's that was my dad's focus. He he works a lot in lost wax bronze casting. Um, so a lot of the process I worked with was working with uh, clay and then um, doing like a uh, doing like a mold over that and then removing it and then casting it in wax and then taking that wax and then having it cast into bronze. So I definitely have worked a lot with physical materials. And um, the really interesting thing with virtual reality is it just it speeds up so much of the process um, that it's just like you're kind of thinking and like not thinking at the same time and just things are happening, you know, it's almost like a one-to-one -one from your mind to like a manifestation. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if this is the right question, but maybe just humor me. Like what are the, what are the hard parts? I haven't messed around with it at all. What are the sort of the hard parts of things that, um, that are difficult about, about sculpting things? Like, you know, when I think of Photoshop or whatever, I think of all these, you know, complicated settings and tools and things that you learn about like what are the what are they in oculus medium yeah um you know medium they did a really good job of kind of hiding uh the more complex operations um but not to where you can never find them it's it's almost like really good at discovery where you just like okay here's clay and then you squeeze it and then there's like a sphere um and i noticed that for like if you scroll way back in my Instagram, you'll see like the early Oculus stuff is like all in one layer. Um, so I didn't use different materials or anything like that. Um, and I kind of discovered more and more that all the things that tool can do. I think the biggest challenge I've ran into is I've, I've never really used 3D tools before. Um, so like once you, it gets to exporting and understanding the difference between OBJ um, and the the other file types and and like um shaders and different things like that that's that's kind of i think where it gets much more complicated once you want to actually render the thing that you made yeah have you have you been approached or have you tried to do anything in like uh video games or like longer form like movies or anything like that i guess like motion things yeah definitely motion -oriented. yeah i have one project but it's like an nda kind of project um so i can't say much about it but then yeah, I've done I've done a little bit of stuff, and then also I've I've kind of worked on my own thing. So I've I'm definitely like um, 
starting to edge into that world, but it's it's uh, it's it's a bit different <laughs> than just actually sculpting and and kind of having a blast in virtual reality to like somebody wants a finished product. It's it starts to get a little more complicated. You start moving files into Maya and trying to to make stuff a little bit more polished. Yeah, it, it, well, just before we move on, the NDA thing, is it something that we, we will see uh, on your feed eventually when you're done? Or, For sure. Or yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll definitely share it, and then it will be something out in the world for everyone. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so that process of just, if, if you do know, like what are the... Uh, what are the pain points when kind of moving to, from like a sculpture to like motion? Yeah. Um, I think the pain point is going back to a screen. Um, oh, okay. it's really weird since like, I've, I think, um, when I was working in tilt brush, I noticed it used to, it like clocks your hours inside of steam, how long you played a video game. Um, and after I got to about like a hundred and some hours, I started to realize I really hate like going back and working on a computer screen. Um, it just doesn't feel intuitive. It's like much more, it's much more difficult. You have a lot of menus where things are buried inside of menus. Um, so I think it's the fact that you can't just say, okay, I want to move this arm here in this amount of time. Um, it's more like, I don't know, understanding the layers of complexity of like how to actually animate something. Yeah. So, so do you sort of, are you a proponent of the idea that like sort of virtual, vir virtual reality interfaces are the ideal interfaces of the future? Like there is something intrinsically better about being in, in this type of uh, mode? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cause we're like, we're in our bodies, you know, from birth and you're like, you're in a body now. Um, and then you're like, okay, this is how I pick something up and this is how i this is how I move this cup and this is how I get food to my mouth. Um, and then as you get older and older, you start to work on computers and stuff. Um, there's like a, a whole removed thing where you have like a keyboard and you're typing down with your hands down low and you're looking at a screen. Um, there's all these different like layers of, of removing you from the content. Um, and by like strapping the goggles right to your head and basically plugging your brain's GPU into the computer's GPU, um, you've like removed so many barriers and you're back to just like, okay, I move my arm this way and this happens and I move my arm that way and this happens and not trying to think about like, okay, this is how a mouse moves and then this is how I type something in. And it seems kind of weird because we use computers all the time, but like the more like you don't need it, the like more you realize how complex it actually is. Yeah, so it's just, it's just more natural. Yeah, I mean, I'm a software engineer, so I, I definitely get the the pain of doing something that is like so abstracted away from like kind of how you naturally grow up as a kid, like how you behave. So yeah, definitely. So this is a little bit of a, okay. I'll, I'll ask you this. How, how do you, like, who do you draw? So you mentioned kid robot earlier. Um, who, who like, do you draw inspiration from that type of, uh, that type of art? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, um, I mean, everything from like wildlife artists is just like a whole history of things I felt like influenced by. I think more recently, definitely uh, like Mirakami and Jeff Koons. I really like kind of the the continuation of the storyline of art that they're telling, where like um, someone like Warhol kind of was like, okay, well now commercialism is so heavy, like it just exists and that's part of art. So I'm going to, I'm going to make that part of my conversation of art um, where Mirakami kind of took from that point and was like, okay, well Warhol kind of commercialized art. How can I just make it like super commercial and kind of like fucked up in a way? Um, and so I think that's like a really interesting part of the, the art conversation. And now, now that we're kind of all going deeper into the virtual world. So I, I'm kind of curious of like, how do you continue kind of that conversation of like, like commercialism and, and consumption and then like being an artist within the world where you know, like anyone can be an artist because anyone can like buy a tube of paint or like, you know, it's like, it's like a really, it's like a really weird time. So it's cool to look at kind of try and understand like where the conversation of art is heading. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think about, um, what do you think about advertisements? How do you feel about about advertisements? Like, do you have any strong opinion on them? 
Yeah, like in what way? Um, like the thing I was thinking about was like I kind of sometimes. Uh, well, I live in Seattle, where I feel like I don't run into it as much. But when I lived in Texas, I feel like I was driving around a lot. Um, I was there's always like billboards and advertisements just in your face. Uh -huh. um, like, what do you think about advertisements? And, th and they're all over the web. They're all, which we spend a lot of time on in, in social media. Do you feel like they're kind of like an invasive thing in like our, just like our visual field? For sure. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. So before us in, um, we basically ran the bike company out of Vermont. Um, and in Vermont, billboards are illegal. So you actually can't have a billboard. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's, it's like it's amazing. way different because you would drive from uh, Vermont over into New York State. And then like all of a sudden there'd be like McDonald's and Burger King and all these things. And it is like just on that level, it's amazing how invasive that is like in your, in your, in your real space, your reality space. Um, but like as far as like software and stuff like that, that shit just gets so crazy because of like, Amazon understanding all your purchasing history and then serving you ads everywhere and then pulling you back into Amazon to sell you something. And it it is like, I don't even know if I'm using virtual reality because I want to use it or because like I was slowly manipulated into using it. You know what I mean? Like it is, it is weird to think like, how did, how did we even end up talking to each other? Probably through lots of like advertising manipulation, like not intentionally that's how we meet, but like, you know, we're all kind of manipulated by it. Yeah, I mean, hashtags are definitely a, a tool for advertisement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny. I've always like been really resistant. I, I know everybody says this, but I really do feel like advertising has very rarely ever really worked on me. Like I've just never really cared about anything. So it's always been annoying to watch them because I just don't care. <laughs> but but when the, the recommender systems that you started, that you referenced just now, like the Amazon or any other clothing website like that you clicked on, like kind of shows you something you were looking at earlier. I actually kind of like it in a way because oftentimes like I'll just like be looking at it and then I'll forget that I saw it and it'll be almost like a reminder like, oh yeah, I meant to get that thing. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't feel that like, I don't know, I have mixed feelings on it too, but. Um, it's weird too because like the timing of it is usually really good. Like it kind of knows whenever you're a little bit weak, the machine does, you know, and then it's like. <laughs> now <laughs> buy it now you you're tired you know i know about what you ate today i know how far you walked today this is the thing you should buy next um i need the raw japanese 300 hundred dollar denim it's important <laughs> for sure you forgot to buy this and you know i know you can do it right now <laughs> yeah so i i well i guess a cool thing is that is it that i haven't really seen a lot of advertisement in the VR experiences that I've been in yet. Mm -hmm. Have you? No. Uh -uh. Um, it's really interesting. I went to Oculus Connect and they, uh, the like new dashboard system looks really awesome. Um, but what it does do is like, it adds that you can, you can like basically like if you're working in medium, you can pull up like a YouTube video or you can pull up your desk, your desktop. So at that point, just like regular kind of advertising, I think will start to spill in there. And then it'll be interesting to see what people start to do with it. Because that's like a space where you're very, very, very susceptible, you know, because you've yeah. kind of, our brains are really, really flimsy. And it's very easy to trick them, you know, you flash something at 90 frames per second in front of your eyes, and you start to believe you're there. Um, so it is, it is like, it is weird to think about, like, when advertising starts to um, penetrate, like, virtual reality and augmented reality more. Yeah, yeah. I think um one thing I think about all the time with VR is how it, it seems like the um the amplitude of the the negative and positive feelings that we feel when we're in VR are just they're just amplified compared to you know, if 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 an advert if uh if having somebody talk shit to me on a video game makes me you know, not feel that bad when I'm playing like Overwatch on a regular computer, mm -hmm. Um, it actually can make me feel really bad, you know, if I'm susceptible to that in, in VR, because it's just, it feels so much more personal. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely. Somebody's like, right. And so there. like maybe advertisements could be worse. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like it would be worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's my instinct. Yeah. I, it's, 
Yeah, it's really it's a really interesting space. Like to go into virtual reality, you're just you give up. Like you're not in the place you were. You know, you're in there. So it's like I don't know. It's it feels much more like. Um, like, uh, have you used like within and stuff like that? I, I was, was doing like the dolphin simulation inside of within. Um, and it's weird. I felt really like sad for dolphins after I left that. Like, I just like, was like, wow, like we're really fucking up dolphins. No. Yeah. I bet we are. Like I, I did the bear one. Oh, it's, nice. like some, it's like BBC or something, but it, it, it was not very good. No offense to BBC or whoever made this. But it just felt like kind of a not that good 360 video. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I could see how it could that could be useful for building empathy for some some wildlife that we are very good at destroying. Yeah, humans are great at destroying things. We're we're great at it. Um, I, yeah. On the also on the note of uh, on VR being kind of very immersive, um, I have like a kind of I would describe him as one of my more like. He's not like a loud person. He's like a soft-spoken friend of mine, um, or at least more so than than some people I know. But I, I I put him onto VR for the first time this like past weekend, and he had never. He's a really talented photographer, really t- talented artist, uh, all this stuff, and I, he didn't really seem to get VR when I was like trying to explain it to him. But then he like put on the headset, and like it was. I should have recorded it because his reaction was insane. He was like tripping the fuck out, <laughs> and. And it's just so cool. It really is like a, a new paradigm, you know? Yeah, I've had the exact same sp- experience, like telling people about VR and they kind of like roll their eyes about it and they're like, oh, yeah. And I put them in there and then it's like, it's an hour later and you're like t- kind of begging them to get out of it. Um, yeah, it's it's really weird. I had my mom go in VR and she used tilt brush and the whole time she was, she was tripping. It's really weird. <laughs> it's just like, oh, oh my god what's happening <laughs> i feel like it's especially good with like older people because they they really trip out yeah definitely it's like their first like it's like an acid experience <laughs> inside a tail brush they're like sp- spring sparkles in the sky <laughs> yeah um what was i gonna say um oh but but then so here's the bad part they or at least for me this is kind of like where it becomes sad a little bit is where you get to you know, for example, if you're playing a game or something, all of the really horrible like UX and design problems that still haven't been quite <laughs> solved yet. And it sounds like an Oculus Medium, maybe they've they've kind of ironed it out, and it's like an it's a good that experience is good. But like I was, so many games I've played in VR are just painful. You know? Yeah, definitely. Like you'll physically get ill, or, or like the the moving around is really difficult um, in a lot of the experiences. Yeah, has that happened to you? Do you get uh are you prone to motion sickness? Yeah, I I definitely <laughs> have gotten so messed up from VR. Um I, I, like um I think at first my machine just wasn't quite powerful enough, you know? So it kind of you just start to feel not great afterwards or after a few hours you're just like I have to lay down or just feel weird. Um so yeah, I've definitely have had that. I I I'm having this thing. I'm curious if you have it. I'm kind of having like this reality more and more. Um, and I kind of read about it. I've noticed some other people online have said they're having the same thing that after using VR for so long, they're starting to not feel like reality is real. Like whenever you come out of it, you know, like the going yeah. back and forth between the two worlds, it's like, and then like reality is kind of like, well, why can't I just do this thing? <laughs> why can't I just make something in the sky right now? Um, yeah. It's really weird to like, go between the two worlds it's a preferable reality no i haven't um i don't think i've locked clocked enough hours yet for that to happen to me i'm still kind of looking for my my golden experience for me to spend 100 hours in right i i i I really like for example in video games the video game i usually play is the one that is like the most polished and like uh for example i'm playing overwatch a lot now and that's just because it's such a polished tight experience and so a lot of these vr experiences are still rough around the edges it's hard for me to fully invest like you know lots of hours into them definitely um so i'm just waiting for that you know yeah there's Um, another art app masterpiece vr and i use that one and i noticed like 
you can't move the material with your left hand while you're, while you're sculpting. And you can do that in medium. You can move it with one hand while you're drawing with the other hand. And just that one difference just made it like so painful for some reason. Like physically, it just feels painful to use. Um, so I know what you mean. Like if it's a little bit rough or there's something not right, it just feels like so wrong inside of VR. Yeah, it, it's another example maybe of this idea of like things that are worse are just amplified. Because I'll put up with like I'll put up with like some sort of shoddy UX on a website that I re- or web app that I really want to get through some interaction. But in in VR, it almost feels worse. Um, mm-hmm. I have another question for you. Um, has Oculus, or I mean, I don't even, maybe you can't tell me this. Maybe it would be secret. I have no idea. Has Oculus contacted you at all? Do you know how you, how big, um, how many other sort of VR artists there are? And like, um, cause I haven't seen a lot that, you know, seem to have as much prolific output as you. So wondering if, if you've been like involved in any like official Oculus community. Yeah, um, there's a few people. Um, Steve Teeps comes to mind. Um, he's a really awesome guy over in Oakland. I met him at uh, Oculus Connect. Yeah, Oculus Connect or Ocu- uh, Medium did contact me um, to feature my work once, and then they had me come to uh, the Oculus Connect Four, and I did some live sculpting there. But it's definitely. It's definitely a small amount of people making art in VR right now. Um, and a lot of those people tend to be coming from video games and or like they're people who work in mud bots and sculpt stuff for video games. And they're they're shifting over to this, using it to kind of um, rough out their work and then they move it back to mud box. But um, I haven't actually seen, I've seen a couple of people or a few things kind of popping up here and there. But I haven't seen anybody like really dedicated to it. That's not kind of like making stuff that's a little bit more geared towards games. Yeah. That's, that's, this, okay. This is a little bit random, but have you, do you know of uh, a music artist named Sophie? I don't think so. Okay. I think it's a she. Uh, she um, um, has some, some art that is, that looks like kind of, the art that you make and that it's like very like stretched out weird like bubblegum art and um you should should just (laughs) you should just check it out it's 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 really interesting um and i don't i don't know why i feel like you would you would like it yeah definitely. Um, i'm always like i'm i'm like always crawling around looking for for more people making art in vr because like it's stuff i feel like everyone's going to be doing it eventually but it's like so it's so exciting now to see like who's doing what and like why why are they doing this why are they just this is insane as me yeah why 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 that's a great question i mean for you it's if i if i guess based on what you've told me it seems like you fell in love with the the interaction feels really good to you is 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 that accurate yeah i i just use it because i think it's the best tool to use um and it's a simple it feels very simple for like how complex it is yeah okay um so, so another question: How do you think that VR? I'm just gonna say XR. Do you think that will change how people sort of experience art? Like, is it just a new tool for uh, creating, or is it also a new tool for consuming? Like, do you think you'll have very unique VR art experiences in the future? Yeah, definitely. I think. Yeah, it's I. I can't like it's hard to predict the future because it's like ten years ago. Not even like. We just didn't even have like iPhones or app stores or things, you know? Um, So it's like so hard to say, and I like don't want to like commit to it too much. But um, Chris Milk said something really interesting in a TED talk, and he said that like this is the last medium. And I I agree with that. Um, Because really, like painting, like, you know, when people were painting, this is what they wanted. They wanted you, like, Dolly wanted you to have a total trip out, you know? Um, And it's like, when people are painting, this is what they want. They wanted to immerse you in like a world that they were creating or like whenever people were taking photographs, they wanted to immerse you in the place that they went or the experience they had. Um, and now we can do that. Like you can totally be immersed in something. Um, so it's inevitable that like this will impact everything. Like everybody will be making art in here. Like I think it'll be more, there'll be less people like making physical art and stuff. And I think that might become really like an interesting area in a way. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of think it's inevitable. Interesting. So, but do you think, um, do you think 
people so people will be making like 2d art even in vr like they won't be making it in real life i think so i'm kind of starting to wonder if there'll be like a need for two-dimensional art you know yeah like once there's augmented reality and everyone has glass sunglasses or glasses or whatever and they like shit can pop up and dance for you and like there'll be no need for billboards if they can just inter like put an ad wherever um yeah it's really weird like this tool is getting so easy to work in three dimensions. Like it's almost like, I don't know the two dimensional world. Like it almost feels like a, like a blip in history or something now. Like I don't, to me, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's like certain aesthetics to it that are awesome. And like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like very, I'm contemplating the same thing a lot because I was working very heavy, heavily in two dimensional design, designing like uh, iPhone apps and Android apps and, and websites and stuff. Um, but like the concept of a button is kind of stupid in three dimensions when you can just like reach out and grab something or like touch the thing on the shelf that you want. Um, so it's, it's really interesting to see we shifted really heavy to like this flat aesthetic of design. And then like all of a sudden VR came out and then like, it's kind of, I don't know. It's although it, like people are like, Oh, there's not a killer consumer thing for it yet. Or it just feels like a matter of time to me. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Let's get a little, let's get a little personal here. What is your, what is your, um, what is your like style? Like as far as how do you, how do you work? Do you wake up in the morning and, and work all, all day? I guess you might have a day job, so you might have to go into the office. Uh, I don't know, but like, how does, how does that work for you? What's your creative process like? Yeah. Um, so actually when I wake up in the morning, um, that's, I've, I've kind of told myself like, an artist making art every day is an artist. But if you're not making art, you're like not an artist. That's what I tell myself. So I'm like, if I can't show up every day and, and at least commit to like bring something new to everybody every day, um, then I feel like I'm not being an artist. So it is like a commitment to me to, to draw no less than like an hour first thing every single morning. Um, and initially that was drawing on an iPad and now that's moved. I mean, it was originally drawing on paper, then drawing on an iPad and now it's fully just getting up and going into VR and drawing for an hour or two um, before I get going on my day. And then like, wow, okay. it depends on the day. Like if I have like other stuff to do in the real world, I'll handle some of that stuff. And then I'll do, I'll do some uh, sculpting and stuff a little bit later. It just depends. Yeah. Do you, um, what time do you wake up? Uh, I usually wake up between four thirty and five. Ooh. Okay. That's what I'm, that's an interesting tidbit. I mean, more, <laughs> I'm meeting more and more people who do shit like that, and I'm I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but <laughs> I, I respect it. No, that's cool. So you wake you wake up early so you so you can get that time in. I guess it is, yeah, because it's crazy. As soon as it's like eight, and then like you gotta walk the dog, and then like you know, the whole world is all of a sudden happening. And when you get up really early, it's like you've you've it's like you've like went into this time that like nobody knows exists, and you could just yeah. do stuff with like zero interruption. Um, so definitely that like between like four and six, like 7 a.m. It starts to kind of crumble and then like eight to nine, it's like falling apart. So it's like that's like the best part of the day. Yeah, that's it. That's interesting that you say that. Yeah, because sometimes I feel like those hours between like eight and noon are like not even my hours anymore. They're just like it's the offices or like I just don't get a lot done. Then. Definitely. I, I'm a nighttime person. I think it was Aphex Twin who said... Uh, he said that he he almost has like different parts of the day almost have like different characteristics for like the type of stuff that they're good for yeah. like the the morning is to like knock certain things out it's just like get certain things that you need to get done done mm -hmm. and then the night nighttime like late hours it are kind of like creative hours um how does that map on for you like you kind of touched on it but yeah definitely the first thing the first time in the morning that's my creative time um that's kind of nighttime, to be fair. Yeah, it is. There's no sun. Like, especially now, it's, like, so dark and, like... But then you go in virtual reality. In medium, there's, like, a nice sky. It's always the same blue sky. So it's kind of, like, it's daytime for me now. Um, it actually is, in a weird way, it's made getting up easier than, like, when I'd get up to draw on an iPad or, like, paper. Um, to, like, go and, in, like, go into the daytime. But, yeah, as far as, like uh, like, kind of the the tempo and like the way it changes throughout the day um 
for me is like definitely the first part of the day is like creative about like 11 to noon ish is when I'll try and like do email and like do a bunch of stuff that's a little bit more like it just has to be done um and then like lunch and then like one to three is just the worst time of day to me I don't know it's just like I just like it's kind of terrible and then it picks back up for the evening I feel great again um and then once the sun like goes down I completely like and feel totally miserable um until it's the next day <laughs> but <laughs> that's that's I, I can get so some things done <laughs> yeah um do you so do you, do you have any um career goals like uh do you want to do like art installations is that something you're interested in yeah definitely um i'm interested in installations i'm interested in, in uh, building some experiences in virtual reality um doing bigger sculptures uh monuments things like that i'm getting i'm getting more geared up and more interested in doing um but yeah I, i'm interested in doing a lot a lot of things i want to make my name kind of synonymous with art so uh just doing as much as possible yeah absolutely i i'm gonna throw this out there there's a festival so i'm from houston and there's a festival that happens there i think this is the third one this year called day for night have you heard of it it's a uh, music festival but it's also a light uh and like art installation festival oh, amazing and um so like last year they had like Aphex Twin and like all these crazy artists, uh, musical artists, but then they had all these incredible art installations. And I'm not even that that big of an art guy, but in that setting, it, it really made me appreciate it. And Bjork was there as well. And she did uh, an art installation and her art installation, I believe, had a VR component oh, to awesome. it. Yeah, I Googled it I when act- you said it. And, um, the images look beautiful. It looks like a lot. Like it looks awesome. <laughs> It's it's fucking amazing, and wow. um, uh, you know, I I I don't know. Maybe that's something you could look into doing. That would be cool. Yeah, definitely. I would love that. So, kind of wrapping up here as we're running out of time. Um, I, I ask everybody some version of this question. Um, usually, I ask, "What are you looking forward to in the future of like VR?" But I actually just want to leave it open. Like, what are you looking forward to in the future of, of technology? And you can just take it in anywhere, anywhere you want. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's so much, um, definitely self-driving cars, um, for sure. VR, AR, um, I, I think there's a lot of really interesting things that'll happen. I think, I think it's going to be interesting because it will be the first, the first like time in written history when people can control what they hear and see, but also, um, a like layer b- above that, like a company will be controlling that. So that's like really, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely self-driving tech interests me. I'm, I'm really excited and also totally hate like seeing Boston Dynamics turn out like robots that can do backflips because I can't do a backflip and I don't ever want to have to fight that robot that can do a backflip. <laughs> Um, but it is like really exciting to see. It's really interesting. Um, so yeah, definitely robotics. It's, we, we are living like in the most incredible time period ever. So that we know of. So it's just so amazing to see everything developing all at once. Yeah. I have a a little bit of a follow-up to that, which is, uh, like, do you, what do you think about, um, it's interesting you say that because some people, I feel like with the barrage of negative media, they think like we're living in the worst time ever. Right. And I just <laughs> like, I know that there's bad things about the world and I don't even need to point any of them out. Cause we all know what they are, but the on like really like what you said, the world is, is we're living in an incredible time. We have a super computer you know? in our pocket. It's a global telephone. Like it's a prospecting tool. You can trade stocks on it. You can like do all your communications on it. You could the like super computer in your pocket. You could make a fortune from like laying on your sofa um i think people just aren't looking and like realizing how incredible everything is and like how easy everything's getting for us that like like really whatever you want to do just go do it like oh you want to start a hardware company here's people who will give you money here's like you can 3d print things that you drew on your computer like yeah laying in bed like it's it's amazing 
Yeah. Like my parents, like my grandparents came, my great grandparents uh, moved to Colorado from the East Coast in a covered wagon on the Santa Fe Trail. So it's just like mind blowing that like I'm like drawing shit in VR. I was going to say like a hundred years ago, if you're like, if you managed to survive like childhood or whatever, like you could just die from like a random infection after working for 16 hours a day in a coal mine or something. Not saying nobody lives like that now, which they do. Sure. And it's horrible. Yeah, definitely. But, um, so on that same note, what do you think about people who, who say like, who are afraid of technology, you know, who's, who are, don't like everybody looking at their phone all the time and, uh, don't like social media thinks that it's like rotting our brains do you have any any thoughts on that yeah um i i definitely agree that there is like a loss of connection of like personal like one-on-one connection but like you and i would never have met and had this conversation if it wasn't for like you like you said you searched a hashtag and then there i was um you sent me a note like uh an instagram and then you sent me an email and then like That was it. Now we're having this conversation. Now other people are learning from this. Um, So yeah, I, I don't really agree that this is, that this is all making stuff work. I think this is making stuff better. Everybody's just getting really, really smart. Um, But I think people are just lazy and they don't really want, they don't really know what they want. And that's like a whole different conversation, but it's like, I think a lot of people don't really know what they want. So they want someone else to tell them what they want, but they don't want someone to tell them what they want. But really, those people need to just like realize they can have whatever they want, like, and go get it. But you're going to have to work really hard, probably, you know. But it's available yeah. to you now, and that, and a lot of this never has been available to anyone. Yeah, it's never been easier. So, okay, this is my last note. Um, ha, do you are you a fan of? What do you think about people like self help people like Gary Vaynerchuk? I am a huge Gary Vaynerchuk fan. Um, okay. actually pretty recently. Um, I actually do. I, I like, like the kind of like positive, like motivational type stuff that just like, Hey, go do it, go do your thing. Um, yeah, I, I think that stuff's really cool. I think it's kind of cool that like these, these people are building entire careers off of just like saying the fo- same, like 10 things over and over to people (laughs) and like just recording themselves doing that every day is like built them an entire like media empires it's kind of cool i I don't know it's interesting (laughs) it really is people need to hear it too you know they're like people need to hear things over and over yeah definitely uh especially positive things well thanks so much john um if you haven't like people out there please go check out his art. It's really crazy. Can you tell people like how they can, uh, how they can find you? Yeah. You can Google me, John Orion Young. Um, I'm on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, I'm all over the internet. I'm on Twitter. So yeah, just go find me and reach out to me because I'm a very friendly person. <laughs> I, can, I can vouch for that. And his Instagram is great to look at. Like I said, it's just like this beautiful curated stream of his work it's great um cool man thank you so much and uh and uh, hopefully uh we can chat again sometime groovy thank you so much thomas hey guys hope you enjoyed that conversation with john i know i did um if you're listening to this on youtube or if you follow us on instagram or twitter which by the way if you don't uh go look us up we're on everything instagram facebook twitter I just made a subreddit, uh, YouTube. So uh, leave us a comment and let us know what you use VR for. I'm really interested to know um, if people are just gaming or if they've actually tried uh, creating art or some other forms of media inside of VR. Um, that would be really cool to hear about from y'all. Um, also open to any other comments, questions, suggestions, concerns, um, or if you know Uh, of any guests or individuals that you would really like to uh, have me talk to. Anyway, thanks again for listening, and I will catch you next time.